In this video, we'll look at the full hypothesis testing procedure using spreadsheets. Now, we're going to have to do three examples to cover everything, but the first thing you want to decide is what are your hypothesis statements? And right away, this will tell you am I working with the mean or proportion? In other courses, you can test things like the standard deviation as well, but we'll be limited to the mean and proportion. In this first example, it's clearly clear that we are testing the mean and a population standard deviation is known. So we want to state our hypotheses and we can always start off with H0, All right, that'll be our null hypothesis, and then H1, that'll be our alternative hypothesis. And then we want to decide whether we're doing the mean or standard deviation for these, and so that would be the mean for this one, so we'll put in the symbol for the mean. And then you want to think about what the alternative and uh, alternative and null hypothesis would be from translating the claims in the problem. In this problem, the claim is that uh, Jeffrey has a new pair of expensive goggles, and uh, Frank th thinks that the goggles help Jeffrey to swim faster than his previous swim times. So Frank's claim is that his average swim time has decreased because he swimmed faster. So this would be mu is less than. And uh, his previous time as average was 16.43. Now, whatever number you have in one hypothesis, you'll add in the other. Um, so from direct translation, we see the alternative hypothesis is uh, less than. And that means that this one could be either an equals or a greater than or equal. We'll just put equals. So there's our hypotheses. And we want to figure out the type of test. And from the alternative hypothesis, you can see that less than pointing to the left, you can tell this is a left tailed test. Okay, and then we want to um, identify the type of distribution. And this is a normal distribution. And the reason is because the standard deviation for the population is known. We can state the uh, level of significance. And it's given to be 0 0.05. All right, uh, then we want to set up our sample statistics. And uh, we have the uh, sample mean. It's given to be 16. Sample size is 15. And uh, we don't have a sample standard deviation. We'll be using the population standard deviation. And we'll use 0 0.8 is what they gave us.
All right. Um, now we want to go ahead and calculate what we need to for this uh, p-value. Right. And so we saw from calculating p-values before that we need to look at the adjusted standard deviation. Um, so we'll do the uh, standard deviation of the sampling distribution. And that would be the standard deviation here divided by the square root of the sample size. Okay, so there's our standard deviation. And we now want to find the, um, the p-value. And remember, this is a left-tailed test. So in the left-tailed test case, we would just find the area in the left tail, and that's just going to use the norm dist function the way it is. And we'll look at the sample mean and to the left with the mean of the population mean, using that above, 16.43. And then the standard deviation is the one we just created, and then the cumulative is 1. So this will find our p-value. Remember, if it was a two-tailed test, you would have to double that. And if it was a right-tailed test, uh, you would put uh, one minus at the beginning. So. All right, uh, then we want to get a picture of this, and uh, you get a picture that looks something like that in the book. And you can hand draw that, or you can uh, find a, a generic normal curve on the internet, and from that, from that generic curve, you can just do some uh, comp some stuff with a uh, software. And then there's some software that will actually draw a picture of this for you. There's a picture of the p-value we'd like. Let me do a better note here. So we'll say that this is left tailed, and uh, and then maybe under here I'll put the right tailed case. And then the two-tailed case we saw before, that was uh, two times whichever one is going to be smaller, whichever one you would normally use. But here we're just really using the, the left tail case. We'll cover that up. All right. Um, then we make our decision. And the decision is made that we would reject and we do that because P is less than alpha. Right, P is 0 0.018 and alpha is 0 0.05. So since P is less than alpha we would reject. And the conclusion The 
sample data supports the claim that the new goggles or say that uh, Jeffrey swims faster with the new goggles. Right, that was the alternative hypothesis that he uh, swim time had decreased and he swam faster. So that's what we do. And that's a complete hypothesis test there. Now, this could all be adjusted having actual sample data. So if you had sample data, would get to right here and the sample mean and standard deviation sample mean and sample size would be calculated from sample data so the sample mean would be the average of that sample data and the sample size would be the count or the amount of data that you have So, I mean, I can put in some sample data here. So we had 16 and 16, and we can put in 15 of them. There. And you get, of course, the same results, um, since we now have a, a sample that has uh, a mean of 15 and a sample size. Sorry, sample mean of 16 and a sample size of 15. Uh, of course, chances are he didn't have a 15 swim times that were all 16 seconds. They just averaged to 16 seconds. Um, but you can see that we now have a new setup here. So if you have with sample data, and again those formulas there, I just went down to 80 to make sure that I include this data set. If if you have more than 65 numbers, you're probably still going to have to extend that. But chances are you won't. And then here I went down to 102. So kind of arbitrary ending points. Remember these functions skip all the blank spots. Um, and again here that's population standard deviation is still something that you uh, would have put in there automatically. Okay, so this shows uh, one of the ways to do this. Let's uh, now move to our next example. And this will be when the population standard deviation is unknown. And in this example, we're actually going to have some sample data. Do example 9.16. Um, so we have here statistics students think that the mean score on their test is 65, and the instructor thinks that it's higher. He samples 10 students and gets their scores, and then he does a hypothesis test. Okay, so um, first off, this is a uh, hypothesis for the mean, We're looking at the mean score, so mu stays. Then we look at the statistics instructor's claim. He thinks that the mean is higher than 65. That's equivalent to the mean is greater than 65. Now the null would be that it is equal to or less than or equal to 65. And that's sort of the uh, student's belief. We're using that as the null hypothesis. Now, since the alternative is greater than, we have a right-tailed test. And this is not a normal distribution. It is a t-distribution. And that is because this population standard deviation is actually unknown. You can notice that it's not written down. Uh, alpha is still 5% in this one. And we actually have sample data to use here. So let's put the numbers in, 65, 70, 67, and then just clear out the ones you don't want. All right, so you get 10 scores, and the average is 67, automatically calculated. 
And here we want to put that this is a sample standard deviation. And the standard deviation would actually be a calculated one. So STDEV parentheses and then include the data. I'm going to go a little farther. So use that. All right. So we now have that information. Now we want to use the right tailed case for this problem. So we really want to do this one. right there. Oh, and uh, we need to adjust this. So the p-value is not correct here, uh, if you notice that. And because uh, you can compare with this, what we're supposed to get. And the reason is because we're using the normal distribution for this p-value, and we should be using the t distribution. All right, so let's make that a little smaller first. All right, and let's get this right-tailed p-value correct. So for the t distribution, we want to use the t dist command. And here you have to specify the value for x. It's going to be your sample mean. And degrees of freedom would be sample size minus 1 and tails. Okay, so this is not giving us the value we want. Is it? No. Because it's not including the standard deviation. So what we're going to have to do is calculate a test statistic, actually, here. And the test statistic is sort of our z-score equivalent in this problem. And what we'll do is we'll take the uh, sample mean, and we will subtract the hypothesized mean, and we will divide by the standard deviation. And this is our z-score formula, right? We're using the standard deviation for the sampling distribution to get that. Let's make sure that's right. That's still doing standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. Very good. All right. And then our p-value should now be calculated. t-dist. It should be the test statistic. Uh, now the test statistic is positive, so we will need to um, look at, see the t-dist is going to give us the area to the left, and really it's a right tail test, so we're going to want the area to the right. So the same reason we put that 1 minus in the previous one, I think we're going to have to put a 1 minus here. Let's see. Degrees of freedom is sample size minus 1. And then tails, you can say a one tail distribution for this one. And we get that. And that's right. So it actually did the right tail test automatically without the 1 minus. All right, so the uh, two tail test case is T test. And we put in the same thing, oops, test statistic, and then the degrees of freedom, and then tails is 1, and we just do a 1 minus.
or the uh, left tail case. So the normal t-dist is actually going to give us a right tailed p-value. And so for left tailed, you need the 1 minus. And here, the two tailed case would be t-dist. All right, test statistic, degrees of freedom. And for tails, let's just put 2. And you could see that automatically doubled the uh, right-tailed case. So we could have done a doubling on that as well. All right, uh, what happens here? We will actually reject again here because the null hypothesis is, sorry, we reject the null hypothesis because the p-value is less than alpha. Alpha is 0.05 and the p is slightly less than that. And what we would say is that the sample data supports the claim that the mean test score is higher than 65, right? The students were believing it was 65, and the instructor has significant evidence that it was higher. All right, now I'm going to take all this and copy it over, except for that last part. Look at the same problem in case this. So if we actually had a sample mean, we would just type it in. Sample size, just type it in. Standard deviation, you just type it in. And you can see that all this stuff is going to come out the same other than that. So the difference here is that uh, these will be typed in. And then here, they're actually calculated. All right, we have one more to do. And this is going to be testing the proportion. So let's go to an example. Here it is. Look at example 9.17. And uh, we're really only going to be looking at without sample data for this. And we typically don't have the sample data. Even on the example I'm going to give you, the application, the uh, sample data is going to be easily digested and converted into what we use here. You do want to start with the hypotheses. Uh, here you can tell with all these percentages we're testing the proportion. So we want a P in the hypothesis statements. And you can read the line, it says that June believes that 50% of the first-time brides in the United States are younger than their grooms. Um, she performs a hypothesis test to determine if the percentage is the same or different from 50%. So the null would be the or different part. And so we actually get these hypotheses, right? 50% is 0 0.5. And uh, if the percentage is the same, that's the null. If it's different, that's the alternative. And this is a uh, two-tailed test. And it does use the normal distribution. Um, and the population standard deviation is actually known because it's based off of the um, hypothesized mean and sample size. Um, but really, we're going to be looking at uh, this being true since it's a, uh, it's a proportion test with a large sample. Now, your level of significance here is actually 1%, so you need to change that. You don't have a sample mean, but you do have a sample proportion and a sample size. And and we have a number of successes. So we have uh, Joan has a 100 sample survey, 100 people in her survey, and 53 uh, reply they are younger than their grooms. So the proportion is. 53 divided by 100. 
0.53. Now the standard deviation for this is going to be a little more complicated. We'll use that formula we've used already. Square root of, and we'll use this one up here, p times 1 minus p divided by n, sample size, all in the square root. That's our standard deviation for the sampling distribution. We don't need that. And so our p value will go back to what we had before. And this is going to be uh, let's put this back here. For the left tailed case, it would be the uh, usual norm dist function. And x is your sample proportion. The mean is the population proportion. The standard deviation is the standard deviation we calculated. And then cumulative is 1. Now for the right-tailed case, we would do 1 minus norm dist and put in all the same stuff. Sample proportion population proportion, standard deviation, and 1. And then the two-tailed case would be 2 times the minimum of these. And this is a two-tailed test, so that's actually the one we're going to want, and it's that uh, 5485 right there, which does agree with the book. Here's a nice picture. Alright, so what happens here? We actually don't reject the null this time um, because the p-value is the p-value is greater than alpha, right? p-value is 0.5485, alpha is 1%. So we'd say we uh, We fail to reject the null hypothesis since p is greater than alpha. And here we say that the sample data fails to support the claim. And the claim is kind of wordy here that 50% of U.S. first time First time U.S. brides are younger than their grooms. That's what this whole test was about. So you can look back and see that June had 53%, right? She had more than 50% of these um, brides being under the grooms, and yet uh, it wasn't enough, right? The, uh, the difference there from 50% wasn't enough, so we would still actually stick with the null hypothesis on this one. Alright, this shows some uh, hypothesis testing. The full procedure uh, should be able to